seen a young child just learning to swim who starts by jumping into the arms of a parent who stands in the shallow end of the pool. Maybe you've even been that child. Can you hear that child saying, tell me to jump to you and catch me? I've read and preached this gospel many times. And each time something new strikes me. This time, it's Peter's childlike excitement in his words. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He doesn't say, Lord, if it is you, I'll come to you on the water. He says, command me to come to you. It's as if he has trust, not in Jesus himself, but in his command. And if Jesus commands Peter, he thinks, he'll be able to walk on the water just like Jesus. It's not too far from the child shouting to the parents standing in the shallow end of the pool, tell me to jump to you. Water is a scary thing sometimes. It's unpredictable. There are rogue waves and undertows and an earthquake several hundred miles away can still cause a tsunami that can devastate a coastline. We know that well. And when you throw in all the possible wind and water combinations that influence a rowboat or a sailboat or a raft, it's no wonder that it takes real skill to navigate a small craft. But this isn't the story of Jesus still in the storm that we have in Matthew chapter 8. The, the disciples aren't terrified of the windstorm. They are simply exhausted. They've had a significant headwind, and they've fought for hours to cover even a small distance. And then, through their exhaustion, and beyond the immediate whitecaps, they see Jesus walking toward them on the water. They can't imagine how it can be Jesus and the flesh. They think it's an apparition. The Greek word says phantasm. It's not really a ghost. They don't think he's dead. But they really don't know what to think. And then Jesus calls to them. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid, he says. In the Greek, he doesn't say it is I. But our old familiar I am. Yahweh. The four letter name for God we first hear when Moses encounters the burning bush. Jesus, as in other places in the Gospels, is here identifying himself with God. And Peter asked Jesus to command him to walk to him on the water. But Jesus doesn't say, I command you. He simply says, come. That sounds more like an invitation than a command, wouldn't you say? And maybe that's not strong enough for Peter, who wants to believe that the words themselves will both compel him and enable him to walk to Jesus. Peter wants magic. And instead, as he gets in over his head, he finds an invitation to faith in the one who gives him a hand. As Episcopal theologian Richard Curbo says, we should like to believe that the God who invites us to take risks also promises us that we shall never find ourselves over our heads. That is not faith. Faith emerges when we are in over our heads. The position of little faith is that, is that to be in over our heads is failure. It is not. Never taking a risk, never going beyond our depth, leaves us without knowledge of what we may accomplish. The only real failure would be to give in to that fear which holds us back in the boat. The fear which keeps us from seeing that Christ appears in the midst of darkness to set us free. The call of our Lord does not lead us first to the safety of a boat or to the warmth of the shore, but into the depth and midst that mysterious and ambiguous sea, the realm in which we live. 
As Christians in the Episcopal tradition, we are generally comfortable with ambiguity. We wouldn't make the same mistake Peter seems to make, which is to think that Jesus' command alone confers the power to walk in faith. Instead, we hear Jesus' invitation to come to him, the one who is called by the disciples, Son of God. And what happens, to use a title by a recent book by Brian McLaren, is that we make the road by walking even if it's on water, and even if with many dunkings and even submersions in the process. We look around our world and we see much that is truly frightening, much that hurts our hearts. Children being brutally killed in Iraq and Palestine. An epidemic of Ebola, one of the scariest diseases in the world. Fires caused by drought and lightning unusual floods, family and friends suffering and grieving. The risks are that we either pull the covers over our head and hide in the bottom of the boat, or that we put our trust in the wrong thing, like biblical literalism. They are real risks, and we even fall prey to them sometimes. But instead of becoming overwhelmed by the waves and winds that threaten to take you down for once and for all, I encourage you to look more closely at the little things around you that bring that confession to your own lips. Truly, you are the Son of God. <coughs> Where have you seen Jesus lately? Where have you heard his invitation to come? Have you quietly observed a child thinking of others? Have you felt yourself overwhelmed by grief or pain and heard an encouraging word? Paul's words in Romans interact with this Matthew text in a profound way today. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him, Paul says and continues, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? As it is written, and how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Imagine today that you are an apostle, one of those sent to bring good news. The good news you might share includes knowledge of the saving help and comfort of God in the midst of life, in the midst of doubts, in the midst of suffering. As you receive the hand of Jesus through others, you offer Jesus' hand yourself. You offer prayer, your presence, a smile, an encouraging word. You offer your own struggles in discipleship. You offer your own strange stories of times you cried something like, Lord, save me, and you seek help from unexpected directions. So, no exhortations today to do like Peter, but encouragement to pay attention in this world when sometimes you'd like to do nothing more than check out. Turn off the news, close your ears to those who might need your help. Jesus is with you as you walk upright and as you need his help to resurface. And that's a gospel story you can share, whether in words, 